Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, uh, we will prove the simplicity of uh, alternating groups uh, when n is greater than or equal to 5. So, let us uh, try to understand uh, the small uh, alternating groups. Okay. So, if you think about it, uh, A1 is going to be trivial and similarly A2 is also trivial. Okay. So, now if you if you go to A3, so which is uh, inside S3 okay so that is going to be isomorphic to Z modulo 3 Z. So this is also a simple group okay so this is also a simple group. So recall that a group is said to be simple if it does not have any proper non-trivial normal subgroup okay so a group G is said to be simple if it has no non-trivial proper normal subgroup. So, obviously, uh, there are two trivial normal subgroups. One is a trivial group and uh, uh, the group G itself. Okay. So, if G is simple then it should not have anything non-trivial and uh, proper normal subgroup. So, Z modulo 3 Z is, is a simple group that is easy to see. Now, if you go to A4, so then what happens? So, so A4 is sitting inside S4. So, we have already seen that uh, so A4 has uh, this uh, Klein 4 group as a uh, normal subgroup. So, which we denoted by capital V. So, I will leave it to you to check. So, this is exactly identity 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 3, 2, 4 and 1, 4, 2, 3. So, this is a normal subgroup of A4. A simple uh, argument is that, uh, so note that all non-identity non elements of this uh, capital V they are all having same cycle type. So, the cycle type of each element is actually 2 2. So, this is the cycle type. So, in particularly, so they must be conjugate inside S4. Okay. So, now uh, if you just uh, think about it, you can easily prove that they must be conjugate even inside A4. Okay. And uh, so, they, they are the only like uh, elements of uh, S4 that are having this particular cycle type 2, 2. Okay. So, in particularly, uh, so these elements are uh, conjugate. Okay. So, in particularly, so this uh, Klein 4 group must be normal subgroup inside S4. So, as a group, as a direct product of group, you can you can check that this V is isomorphic to Z modulo 2Z cross Z modulo 2Z. Okay. It is an abelian group because it is a group of order 4. So, we have already seen that any group of order 4 either must be cyclic which is isomorphic to Z modulo 4Z or isomorphic to Z modulo 2Z cross Z modulo 2Z. So, A4 is not simple that is what uh, this observation says. So, now what is about A5 onwards? So, that is a theorem. So, one can prove that An is simple for all n greater than or equal to 5. Okay. So, this is actually uh, somewhat very important result in uh, first course of uh, introduction to group theory. Okay, so, there are many steps involved in this proof. So, let us uh, go through one by one. So, let me just first state all the steps actually. The step one is actually realizing that, uh, so there is a very uh, important distinguished uh, uh, set of generators for A n. So, those are nothing but three cycles. So, if you take any element, okay. So, and this is true for any n greater than or equal to 3. For n greater than or, n greater than or equal to 3, so if you take any element of this uh, a n, so that is actually a product of 
3 cycles ok. So, all the 3 cycles lie in A n and uh, you can prove that uh, any element of A n is a product of 3 cycles for n greater than or equal to 3. So, that is the first step. So, then as a second step you can actually realize that uh, which is we already proved. So, this is the lemma that I proved in the earlier class. So, uh, if n is greater than or equal to 5, so then uh, you can say that uh, 2 elements, so 2, 3 cycles, sigma and sigma dash or conjugate ok. So, any so then any 2 3 cycle sigma and sigma they are conjugate in A n. So, we know that sigma and sigma dash if they have same cycle type then they must be conjugate in S n. But now what we are saying if you take 2, 3 cycles they must be conjugate even in A n. So, since they are conjugate in A n, so if you can prove that uh, ok, if you start with a normal subgroup ok, let us say uh, again assume n is greater than or equal to 5 and h is a normal subgroup in A n and assume that h contains a 3 cycle. So, then with this assumption one can immediately conclude that h must be A n. So, how one can conclude this? So, this comes from step 2 and step 3. So, first of all step 2 says that any 2, 3 cycles inside A n they must be conjugate ok. So, now if you take uh, if h contains 1 3 cycle let us call it sigma ok. So, here is the proof if sigma is inside h which is a 3 cycle. So, then what happens tau sigma tau inverse must be in h for all tau in a n. So, this is because h is normal inside a n as h is being normal inside a n. So, then from step 1 sorry step 2 you see that all 3 cycles are in H ok. So, now from step 2 so sorry step 1 we see that H contains all 3 cycles in A n ok and in particularly it contains the subgroup generated by that which is A n ok. So, that proves H is equal to A n. So, in order to prove actually uh, a n is simple for all n greater than or equal to 5. So, we need to prove only uh, the step 4 ok. So, what is step 4? So, step 4 uh, is that ok you just prove h contains 1 3 cycle if h is a non trivial normal subgroup in A n ok. If n greater than or equal to 5 and h is let us say non trivial normal subgroup in A n. So, then we prove that H has a 3 cycle. So, now step 4 implies actually the simplicity of A n. Step 4 implies A n is simple for n greater than or equal to 5 using step 2, step 3 ok because any non trivial uh, normal subgroup of A n contains a 3 cycle. Now, using step 3 if it contains a 3 cycle then it must be A n ok. So, we need to check only 2 steps. So, one is step 1 that is any 
element of an is a product of three cycle and we need to check step 4 which is the non trivial step that for n greater than or equal to 5 any non trivial normal subgroup must contain three cycle so let's prove one by one so let's check step 2 sorry step 1 so it says any uh, element of an must be a product of three cycle suppose sigma is comes from an so then we can write sigma as some product of transpositions so now note that uh, this uh, transpositions uh, number of transposition that appear in sigma that must be even so r must be congruent to 0 modulo 2 as sigma is a, is an even permutation so now in particularly we can actually group them together now tau 1 tau 2 you group them together and so on then tau r minus 1 tau r you group them together so now if you can prove that the product of two transposition is nothing but product of three cycles so then that proves that sigma is indeed product of three cycles okay each one of them is product of three cycle okay product of three cycles will imply that sigma is a product of three cycles okay how to check uh, product of two transposition is indeed product of three cycles so that is easy for example if they are not disjoint and share one element in common then it must be of the form a b times b c then in, we already checked a b times b c must be exactly a b c okay so this case is done now let us say they are actually disjoint then it will be of the form a b times c d if it is of the form a b times c d then you can write it as a c b times a c d okay so this i will leave it as you to verify so there is another way to actually write write the same thing if it is disjoint you write it as i j and k l then the product of i j and k l is actually you, you can write it as i j k and j k l so this is different from the one you see here so like i said the product of this transpositions or product of these three cycles and all they do not need to be unique okay so here is another way of writing so i leave it to you to check these two so now from this it is clear that any product of two transposition is nothing but is actually a product of some three cycles so maximum one or two are involved so now that proves step 1 so any uh, element of a n is actually nothing but product of uh, three cycles so now we will come to this step 4 which says if if you are in uh, a n n greater than or equal to 5 and h is a, a non trivial normal subgroup then it must contain three cycle so this is actually somewhat involved so let us go again step by step so we have to use all the results that we have already proved okay so here is the proof of step 4 so you you fix n greater than or equal to 5 and let uh, h is non trivial normal subgroup inside a okay so we want to show that uh, this contains a 3 cycle so if you think about it okay if you take this transposition inside sn is there any way to kind of identify the transposition so one can identify the tra the transposition using its fixed points okay so if it is uh, so transposition must be non trivial okay it at least permutes two elements ij let's say all other indices are fixed so that means it has the maximum number of fixed points okay it is a non trivial element non identity element having maximum number of fixed points inside sn similar characterization one can give for three cycles when you when you think it as a as an element of a 
you take a three cycle so just let's say permutes i j k all other elements are fixed that means all n minus 3 indices are fixed so it is non trivial element in an that has maximum number of fixed points so that motivates us that if you want to prove h is equal to an so then if you are looking for some three cycle inside h so then it is actually makes sense to actually look for some element that has maximum number of uh, fixed points okay so take sigma is an non identity element of h that has maximum number of fixed points in i n okay so now what we claim this sigma must be 3 cycle okay this is the claim this sigma is indeed a 3 cycle so once we prove this then we are done so whatever it is sigma is an element of sn so it can be written as product of disjoint cycles and the disjoint cycles also must have some property because sigma comes from an okay so write sigma as product of disjoint cycles so this is the cyclic decomposition of sigma so then uh, we need to prove that this r is exactly 1 and uh, sigma 1 is actually cycle of uh, length 3 okay so the very first case assume that all of them are transpositions so that can happen okay so case 1 assume that all of them that is all sigma i's are transpositions okay they are all disjoint cycles but it can happen that they are all transpositions okay if r is even then it can be just product of disjoint uh, cycles transpositions so now uh, so we claim that so this this actually uh, the, then this sigma cannot be satisfying this property it cannot have maximum number of fixed points so for that purpose what we do we actually produce some new element inside h so how are we going to do okay so because uh, this uh, sigma is indeed come from an so this r has to be at least 2 okay this r must be at least 2 once we assume that they are all transpositions okay so since this r is greater than or equal to 2 you write sigma 1 as some ij sigma 2 as some kl so they are disjoint okay this they are disjoint cycles this disjoint cycles so now you have n is greater than or equal to 5 so choose say yes okay which is different from i j k l so i can choose one yes okay so now you can set this tau which is a which is a three cycle again which is just k l s so this is an element of a okay so now now note that the h is normal in a n and sigma is coming from h okay now if you take tau sigma tau inverse this this is going to be in h so because tau is in a n so now what we can do we can look at this particular element tau sigma tau inverse sigma inverse so this is in h and this is in h so the product is in h so this is going to be our new element omega okay so our climb this element omega which is tau sigma tau inverse sigma inverse this this is an element of h which has more fixed points than sigma 
okay so let us try to verify first of all we need to verify omega is not identity okay so omega is not identity so why is that because look at what happens when you apply it on k omega of k so what it does omega of k is tau sigma so let's uh, write it properly tau inverse sigma inverse of k so note that what is sigma so sigma is the product okay sigma is sigma 1 sigma 2 etc sigma r where sigma 1 is ij sigma 2 is kl okay and you have this tau which is k l s so what is going to be sigma inverse of k that is comes from the sigma 2 inverse of k because sigma is are all disjoint transpositions so that means this is going to be exactly l so tau sigma tau inverse of l but what is tau inverse of l tau inverse of l is this k so this is tau sigma of k but what is sigma of k sigma of k is going to be l again because that is sigma 2 of k so this is going to be tau of l but tau of l is nothing but s so this is going to be s so omega of k is nothing but s but obviously by choice s is not equal to k so that means this omega does not fix k so that means omega cannot be identity so this forces that omega is not identity so we have verified omega is not identity so now let us see what happens uh, to ij so we claim that omega of i is i and omega of j is j okay so let us compute i will do only one computation so let us look at omega of i omega of i is going to be what so again let me write it here so sigma is ij kl and so on some sigma of r and tau is kls so that is all matters for us kls ij kl okay so now what is omega omega is nothing but tau sigma tau inverse sigma inverse applied on i so sigma inverse of i is going to be j so tau sigma inverse tau inverse of j so j is fixed under tau so it is going to be tau sigma j but sigma of j is going to be i so tau of i but i is fixed by tau so it is going to be i so omega of i is exactly i similarly you can see that omega of j is equal to j as tau fixes j and i both okay tau of i is i tau of j is j so that is all you use and sigma just uh, switches i and j so because of that you can see that omega of i and omega of j they are fixed by uh, sorry i and j are fixed by omega so now you can observe the following if a is actually some fixed point of fixed point of sigma and if a is not equal to s so then it is immediate that omega of a must be a why because again recall what is tau tau is nothing but k l s okay so anything apart from this k l s everything else is fixed so now what is sigma sigma is i j k l and so on sigma for okay that is your sigma so definitely i and j are not fixed point of sigma k l they are not fixed point of sigma so if sigma of a is a would immediately imply a is not equal to i j k l so the only letter that remains is this s this sigma this a can be s yes, okay so but if you assume a is also not not s yes, then that forces that tau of a equal to a and sigma of a equal to a so both are true if tau fixes a sigma fixes a then omega is nothing but what omega is nothing but tau sigma tau inverse sigma inverse so that means 
so product of elements which are fixing a so omega fixes a so now you have how many elements so apart from this four okay including this a okay you can see that except this five elements all other elements are fixed by omega so now we also see that this i and j they are also fixed by omega now if you take this sigma this sigma except yes okay everything else that fixes uh, by sigma fixed by omega so that means the number of fixed points of omega is going to be exactly at least one more than okay number of fixed points of sigma plus 1 so here we have we, we could possibly miss one sigma of s can be s okay but we don't care because all other elements are fixed by sigma or fixed by omega and more than that i and j they are also actually fixed by omega so you have removed one and added two so so that is why you get at least the number of fixed points of sigma plus 1 which is absurd because we assume that sigma has the maximum number of fixed fixed points so that proves that this uh, tau uh, sorry this sigma cannot be product of transpositions okay so this condition is actually not true so now once we proved this then what is the case 2 so then at least one of them should be should be having length greater than or equal to 3 so let us assume because sigma is commute we can assume sigma 1 has length at least 3 so let's say sigma 1 is a cycle of length at least 3 okay so so now if r equal to 1 and sigma equal to sigma of 1 okay and sigma 1 has length 3 so then we are done okay so in this case we are done or otherwise what can happen so sigma 1 can have length more than 3 okay so there are two possibilities either r is greater than or equal to 2 or length of sigma 1 should be more than 3 okay r is 1 and length of r1 length of sigma 1 is at least 4 but it cannot be 4 if it is 4 then it becomes odd permutation so it has to be at least 5 so only these two conditions can happen but in both conditions you can see that sigma must to move at least two elements let's say p and q okay so so this implies sigma must to move at least two more elements okay so now write uh, sigma 1 okay it is just some i j k and so on it could be any length okay this p q is not coming from this i j k okay either it can be part of sigma 1 or it can be part of different cycle but anyway whatever it is so now what you do you construct again another tau which is k p q take this three cycle k p q as before you can construct this omega which is tau sigma tau inverse sigma inverse so which is going to be element of h because tau is element of an so the conjugate this is element of h and the product is element of h so now i will leave it you to check the following okay this omega is actually not identity so especially what it does omega of k is going to be p okay so so it is it cannot be identity so now you can check that this tau sigma tau inverse sigma inverse this actually fixes j 
okay and that is easy because this tau fixes j and sigma inverse actually takes uh, j to i okay and i is also fixed by tau and sigma of i will become j okay so note that sigma of i is j and sigma inverse of j is i and tau fixes both uh, i and j so using this you can verify that tau sigma tau inverse sigma inverse fixes j and moreover if you take tau sigma tau inverse sigma inverse this fixes every element of this i n that are fixed by fixed by sigma okay so that is again not that hard to see uh, because once sigma fixes some a then sigma inverse of a will be a but that uh, tau inverse must fix that a because uh, the way we constructed tau tau is the cycle k p q and p q i j k they are they are not fixed points of this uh, sigma okay so this is also obvious so in particularly this omega has more fixed points more fixed points than sigma so which is a contradiction this is a contradiction to our assumption our assumption is this either r is greater than or equal to 2 or r equal to 1 and the length of sigma 1 is greater than or equal to 5 so both cannot happen that forces that r is equal to 1 and the length of sigma 1 equal to 3 and sigma must be equal to sigma 1 okay so this proves that uh, uh, this h must contain uh, at least one three cycle and uh, from our earlier steps you can conclude that that h must contain all three cycles so that proves that actually an must be simple for all n greater than or equal to 5 so this is a very important result uh, that you learn in uh, first course in group theory okay now using this you can easily conclude something about the symmetric group okay i will leave it as exercise you can actually uh, uh, think about it if you take sn for n greater than or equal to 5 then you can actually prove that an is the only only normal subgroup only normal subgroup of sn okay okay so i will stop here uh, and then like we will continue with uh, uh, other examples in the next class okay thank you